In today's Game Week 31 team selection, we're going to be discussing injuries to Lascelles, Gusto and Saka. We're also going to be taking a look at how my team is lining up for this game week and my chip strategy for the end of the season. Wasting no time and diving straight into game week 30. This is the points that I did score. As you can see, a pretty good game week for me. 74 points overall. The only ones left to go in are Connor Bradley's two bonus points that he did somehow manage to snag right at the end of the game. So I'm pretty happy with that one. As you can see, a pretty good rank increase for us as well. Slowly working towards that top 100k finish by the end of the season with two chips in hand. I definitely think we we do have the possibility to go and do that. We've got Salah as well. That's the most important player for this week. So I do feel very confident that with the chips that left to play, obviously the certain players and this wild card that, you know, has gone pretty well. The game week 30 wild card is gone pretty well for me and my team. Yes, there are a few issues that we are now going to have to deal with. But overall, game week 30, a very, very successful game week. The standout performers for me, Obviously, Salah, Son as well. Probably both of those should have got more out of that game. Cole Palmer with 15 points. I said this and I've been saying it for quite a while now. It is, I think we need to start looking at Cole Palmer as potential captaincy material. Chelsea do have Sheffield United and some pretty good fixtures coming up basically all the way till the end of the season. They're going to have at least two double game weeks as well. We need to stop treating him like a 5.8 million asset that he is and start treating him like he's 8, 9, even 10 million. If he was somebody like Saka or Son, there would be no hesitation when they have these strong fixtures to give them the armband. So I think we need to start doing that with Cole Palmer because he's got 20 goal contributions for this season. He's on penalties and his per 90 data is absolutely ridiculous. Other standouts, Solanke, very happy I kept him. Another goal for him. That's his 16th of the season. Alexander Izak is one of those players that if you time it right, it is beautiful. But I do expect him to pick up an injury at some point because that's the way it goes with this guy. In terms of the negatives for this week, as you can see, the two injuries at the back. Lascelles looks like he's going to be out to six to nine months with an ACL. So he's not going to last too long in the side. Gusto as well did leave the game with a knock. So hopefully it is nothing serious. But with the games kind of being in quick succession for the next few uh, weeks I do think he potentially could miss out on one or two games which is a little bit of a blow but he is here for more the longevity when Chelsea obviously do have their two double game weeks uh, the other injury is Bukayo Saka now he did sustain an injury in the City game now people are very dubious of this injury they feel like it might have been just one of those poor performance based injuries rather than an actual injury so we're going to have to wait and see what Arteta says about that if we get any early team news potentially as well they will be playing on Wednesday so it is quite a short uh, short turnaround for Saka to potentially be fit. But we've seen it so many times this season. The guy goes off, he's in a wheelchair, both his legs are broken, but he still manages to come out and play the next game. So I do feel quite confident and I think it should be fine. Bakayo Saka for me should be pretty safe and steady for game week 31. So let's hope so. But let's go and take a look at how my team is lining up for this game week. And starting off our game week 31 team selection, I've actually gone with Onana over Petrovic. I feel both goalkeepers, you know, they're a little bit hit and miss. Both teams very unreliable at keeping clean sheets. The reason I've gone for Onana is Manchester United are facing a hell of a lot of shots at the moment. And I think this game, both teams are going to score. So I'm not expecting a clean sheet. What I am hoping for is Chelsea pepper that, you know, United goal and Onana comes away with a few saves as well. So potentially I'm kind of leaning more towards Onana. I get Chelsea at home, but again, defensively, they are leaving a lot of questions to be asked. So I don't think going for Petrovic makes sense. I'm back in on United conceding a lot of shots and Onana having to pull out a few saves as well. So hopefully that decision pays off. That's at the moment. Things could change, but that is the way that I'm currently rolling. Moving into the back line, we're going to go with Gabriel. We saw what a good defence Arsenal were today. Yes, that game was boring. Yes, it was dull. But when they do need to defend, they can set themselves up to be super resilient, as we saw from Arteta's men today. So Gabriel, very easy pick in here for Luton at home. Maybe might get himself an attack in return as well. But pretty strong fixture. Very happy to have him. That flag should disappear after the game. Gusto, I did briefly touch on. There hasn't been any updates yet from Pochettino. 
Pochettino, so I am kind of in a little bit of limbo with him at the moment, whether or not he's going to play. As you can see from the bench, we don't really have too much defensive cover. Obviously, Lascelles picked up that injury, that long-term injury as well, so he's going to be out, but I don't think it's worth, you know, we've got no budget to play with, so I don't think it's worth bringing in another 3.9 mid uh, defender sorry, for Lascelles, wasting a transfer. Just doesn't seem right to me at the moment, so I don't think I'm going to make any moves. Just play Branthwaite, hope for the best. Like, defenders this year, they all seem pretty naff, to be honest, so... I don't think there's too much point wasting a transfer on that one. Bradley is our final defender. I was extremely impressed watching the Liverpool game. I thought he was absolutely fantastic. Very unfortunate not to come away with an attack in return. Getting in those kind of attacking positions, definitely passing the eye test for me. So, big plus. I'm glad I went with him. Sheffield United as well. I can see him playing those. Obviously, Trent is slowly returning for injury. I reckon I've got two to three more games with Connor Bradley being in this defensive line, but we're going to have to wait and see. I do think he will get some attacking returns along the way, though, because he is looking mightily impressive. And even if Trent is back, we might still see Bradley start in some of these games as well, because he has been super impressive in that right-back position. You know, Trent hasn't had the best of seasons, has kind of been adapting towards this more midfield role as well. So it's going to be interesting one to see when both of those are back, who takes the priority in that right-back position. But for me, I'm very happy with Bradley at the moment. Moving into our midfield, we're going to start off with the thumbnail man. It is going to be Mohamed Salah. He's taking the armband this week. I think it's a very safe and kind of explanatory decision on that one. I don't think there's anything I kind of need to kind of elaborate any further on. Sheffield United have conceded the most shots in the Premier League. They are one of the worst defences in the league. Liverpool at home again at Anfield as well. Salah as well had the most shots he's ever had in the Premier League against Brighton. I think he was just super unfortunate maybe a little bit rusty, maybe just not playing as many games over the past few weeks, maybe he's lost that little bit of sharpness, but with the games coming quick and fast, I think he will get himself on the score sheet, hopefully pick up a couple of goals as well, punish the people that don't have the opportunity to go and get Salah, you know, like he almost did this week, he very, very could have easily gone and got a hat-trick, but it was super close, didn't quite work out this week. Hopefully, it can work out again with him on the armband. Son is the next midfielder. West Ham, very nice fixture. Nothing I'm going to change on that one. Very happy for him. Saka, we spoke about his injury. We're going to have to just wait and see. In terms of replacements... There aren't any that I'm super, super keen on, to be honest, for Saka at the moment. I think maybe it could be Eze, maybe it could be somebody like Foden, but there's no one kind of screaming out to me at the moment to potentially replace Saka if he is injured. I might just chuck Garnacho in there. I think I want to roll this week. That is the plan. Take two into next week. Kind of see the landscape a little bit more. See what we're kind of working with after the midweek uh, Premier League round as well. So that is the plan with that one. I'm just going to wait and see. Unless Arteta gives us confident news that he's definitely out, which I doubt he'll do. So I'm going to just keep Saka. Uh, and finishing up, it is going to be Cole Palmer. Very happy to have him. No qualms with that one. Yeah, I expect him to do very well against a poor Manchester United defence. Uh, moving on to our front line and it's going to be the same front three as this weekend. Solanke with Palace again he had a really good game against Everton. Should have potentially had a penalty as well. Got his goal. Could have had another one as well so very happy I did keep him. Obviously a double game week coming up for Bournemouth as well so if you are potentially looking for a forward and you don't have a free hit available I think Dominic Solanke is an excellent player to go and buy. Haaland very frustrating, I can imagine, for him against Arsenal. Villa, you know, positive result of the weekend. They do have European football coming up, so maybe some potential risk of rotation. I think Haaland will get on the score sheet against Villa. I don't think he's captaincy material, especially with Salah having Sheffield United, but I think he's worth having, especially longer term with the double game week coming up for Manchester City and some pretty saucy fixtures along the way after this Aston Villa game. And then finally, Alexander Izak. Everton are on a shocking run. No wins in their past 12 Premier League games. Is a club record that they have matched since 1994. Obviously, my only concern with Izak, and I've mentioned this in a few videos so far this weekend, it is the fact that obviously Anthony Gordon, such a creative hub for that Newcastle side, is suspended. Almiron as well. 
you know, there's a lot of injuries and suspensions racking up at Newcastle. How is that going to impact the creativity of Alexander Izak? I don't know. We're going to have to wait and see in this game what impact Anthony Gordon was having. But for me personally, it could be one of those weeks where things don't quite go to plan. So it could be a little bit of a disaster. Let's have a quick run through of the bench. Uh, Petrovic, we spoke about. Garnacho, he's probably going to come in for Saka if that's the case. Lascelles is going to move to third sub as he, well, won't be playing again this season. And Brown Waits just there if we do need him. So that's the team selection. Let's go and take a look at my chip strategy for the remainder of the season. And rounding off today's video, I thought we would take a look at my chip strategy. Maybe you're a little bit unsure what to do with any potential chips as well. So, you know, it's always handy to potentially take a look at the fixtures coming up. This, obviously, spreadsheet that you're seeing is put up by Ben Krellin. As always, there will be a link to his fantastic work in the description. He's a goat of this. I've kind of, you know, sucked him off probably enough this weekend that, you know, He's probably, you know, if he's got a girlfriend or a wife, they're probably going to be a little bit jealous. So uh, we'll stop there. But yeah, like I said, go and check out his content. Some amazing stuff that he puts together throughout the season. So for me, my chip strategy is I'm going to 34 free hit. Obviously, we've got Son. Uh, we've got triple Chelsea as well. So that's probably the way we're going with that. Then obviously, we're probably going to look to get a few more Spurs boys in for their doubles in 35 or 36. Then in 37, we are going to be bench boosting. So my transfers are basically going to be dependent on who has good fixtures for 30. 31, 32, 33, 35, 36, and if they double in 37, that is a huge plus. That's basically the aim of the team, to be honest. Try and get as many people in for that double game week so we can have at least like a full 11 and the bench as well with uh, double game weeks. That would be absolutely immense. I feel that would be a vital use of of the bench boost as well so you know we're gonna have to start looking at some other players in these positions and you know what looking at these fixtures if I do need a potential Odegaard uh, Saka replacement maybe somebody like Bruno Fernandez, or maybe somebody like Marcus Rashford potentially could be on the menu yes the 31 and 32 aren't amazing but then Bournemouth Sheffield United Burnley Palace and then a double game week that seems pretty good to me. That does seem very good. So they might potentially be on the menu at that point. To be fair, maybe even game week 33, if Saka is still fit and available, we might make the switch to Bruno Fernandes or Rashford as well. Because at that point, we will be free hitting. We won't need Saka as well post game week 34 anyway. So that potentially could be a little bit move that I've uh, identified there. Right, let's talk about you guys. Let's try and help you guys out as well because that's, th that's the main aim of this channel. So let's say you've only got maybe a free hit left. Well, for me personally, it's all dependent on what your team is looking like going into 34. If you can manage without it, probably free hit in 37 or 38. Now, if you've still got that wild card left, you've still got your bench boost left, then the ultimate strategy for me would be to den end the team into 34. So bring in as many people that double or, you know, at least have a positive fixture for 34. Then wild card in 35. So you're going to have triple Chelsea. You're going to have triple Spurs and try and get as many people in there for the double. So then when you use your bench boost in 37, there's a golden moment. Now, if you've still got the triple captain chip that I know a few people do potentially have, again, you're probably looking at the double game weeks, to be honest. Now, Cole Palmer could be a decent shout. You know, looking at that Nottingham Forest and Brighton one, that potentially could be one. City have Fulham and Tottenham if you wanted to go for Erling Haaland, but that's towards the business end of the season, and you do feel like if City are in a Champions League semi-final, potentially could be dropped for some of those games, especially if they're out of the title race as well. Could be a little bit of an interesting one there. And then the obvious other candidates are Bukayo Saka against Wolves and Chelsea in game week 34. Or uh, Mohamed Salah in uh, game week 34 with Fulham and Everton. And after yesterday's performance, why not? Ollie McBurney against Burnley and Manchester United. That last one was sarcasm. I hope you can take that. But there's a few kind of strategies that you potentially could be playing help you guys out if you want to take a screenshot of this as well help you plan for future game weeks coming up you know gets your team in a very good shape and should help you beat your mates in your mini league as well so yeah thank you very much for watching today ladies and gentlemen i massively appreciate all the support that you've been showing on the channel recently so if you do enjoy any of the content that you see be sure to like comment and subscribe but thank you very much from me and good luck this game week